special edition. I'm sitting here driving Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I meet my friend Annie. He's hiking. I'm sitting here a four and a half hour drive. I'm already an hour and four minutes into the drive. Technically an hour and a half because I still have to get gas. But anyway, I got another three hours to go. Three hours and 15 minutes to go to be at black. And I'm sitting there going, how do you pass the time when you're driving by yourself? I personally listen to a lot of music, or podcasts, or audiobooks. I've been obsessed with the DEF CON soundtracks lately. Basically, DEF CON is a hacker convention, and they release an album every year. And apparently in the archives, they've got everything from DEF CON 10 and above. So I downloaded all that a couple days ago, and synced it to my phone. I now have DEF CONs 10 through 24 on my phone. Apparently there's a lot of live mixes along with albums. I guess in the past five to six years, they released a DEF CON album. But before that, they released a DEF CON collection of DJs. The one I was just listening to had some amazing music on it so far. I figured I'd take a break and record some of this for the podcast, because it would be interesting to have a little bit of a different take on the podcast. Well, I'm sitting here driving... Thinking, wow, I've got four and a half hours to chill. What am I going to do? Well, fortunately, I've got plenty of podcasts to go through. I think at any one time, I had at least a minimum of three days of podcasts on my phone to listen to. Which, eventually, I'll get through all of them. But most likely, I'll just have a rolling collection of what to listen to. Something I'm listening to right now to catch up on is Politics, Politics, Politics by Justin Robert Young. I just caught up on FPV Raw with Ruben Heineke does basically sweep um, fixed wing aircraft. I'm also caught up on the morning stream. I'm caught up on Jury Daily. I'm caught up on the morning stream. No agenda. Just name a few. And right now I'm driving through one of the famous tunnels of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. One out of three tunnels from my way to Philadelphia. So, I'm sitting here driving thinking, what I'm going to talk about. Hopefully the audio is pretty good on here, but I'll find out after recording, since I don't have the audio equipment like that on my phone. I think this is a good, a good idea to give this a try. The thing I love about tunnels is the fact that they don't slow down on the turnpike, unlike the tunnels in Pittsburgh. I'm doing a steady 50 miles an hour right now, I guess we did slow down a little bit, but not like the South the Squirt Hill Tunnel or the Fort Pitt Bridge Tunnel. Those are the only two major tunnels in Pittsburgh, now that I think about it. But there's just something very refreshing and relaxing about long stretches of drive on the turnpike. GPS signal lost. And as you heard, I've lost GPS signal in the tunnel. With only like 100 feet to go, I get it back. One cool thing I like about the first tunnel is you come out and all of a sudden you're going down this giant wide road. Oh, this field is 55, that's why we're doing 50. The only thing I love about coming out of this tunnel is that some people like to fly down the hill like I do. But unfortunately today, everyone's driving the speed limit. So, a little bit of a sadness. Also, this is one of the few, very few podcasts where you actually have my face instead of just the jackknife chicken truck background. Now that I think about it, I might want to put a logo on here after I get done with this video. Which is the other thing. Thanks to doing live podcasts, I don't have to do as much editing in Sunny Vega as anymore. But, that's not a big deal. I do a lot of editing for my drone videos to cut out all the crap. The last thing that I did was for a video I did at Ready Made RC's FUV Fest back on the 6th of September, I think. I got one of my last flights in where I basically flew my wing and apparently it flew really well. I got multiple compliments from the pilots at FUV Fest. But unfortunately, I crashed into the runway and had a nice destruction of my plane, which I fixed with a little bit of goop and a little bit of duct tape. Everything's bright as rain. Well, the FPV system needs to be mounted, which means I need to print a piece for that. Which reminds me of 3D printer. The second 3D printer I bought is working well. 
I just need to sit down and fix the first of you prayer so I can do the illustration. The shelf's coming along nicely too. I just put up two th pieces of pegboard to hang tools. The way I, I see my walking workshop working is on the one side, I'm going to have my 3D printers along with my, my workbench where I'll work on my drones and other projects. On the other side, where I have my CNC machines and, and, and saws. I don't really plan on doing a lot of woodworking per se, but anything that, require, that generates a lot of sawdust would be on the other side of the room. I need to figure out a way to put a dust receiver or some floor or something floor, but we'll go to a shop back, I'm guessing. I'm sure I can figure out something creative. The nice thing I like about my shop is that the majority of the shop has been created with recycled wood. I, I went down to Lumberjacks and got some 2x6s some, some, uh, that were basically destroyed on one side and used those for shelving. Also, the wood that I had for the for most of the wood forming thing I had from various projects. For example, a lot of the wood I used was the remaining wood came from my project for building the shelves in my kitchen. I also got some reclaimed 2x4s and shelving material for my buddy Christian. All in all, I like the fact that most of my shop is recycled materials. Shout out to Dave Snyder who gave me the saw and the grinder. Along with, I've also got a plane from Christian cleaning up the closet at the shop. We spent a couple of days putting up shelves so that we could, we could basically rewind. When, we first got the, when Christian first got the shop, uh, this guy Doug, who does electrical work for him in Kitchen City, he ended up needing some storage space. So Christian and I built some shelves, but his material is a uh, take a bus room in the shop. We're just not supposed to take the, get a 10 by 10 area in the area where Christian went to his brewing, or while brewing with his distillery, distilling of whiskey. And ended up giving me the storage room for all my stuff, which is awesome. Because there's shelving already there, and it's already a room. So I didn't have to actually build anything other than the shelving I'm going to use. So now I have some shelving up high, which I've already started sorting through stuff. And then I have the workshop area underneath, and a place for all my tools and stuff. The apartment's still a mess, but it's getting there. I like I don't know if I mentioned this other podcast or not, but an epiphany and basically moved most of my crap out of my out of my out of my apartment and into the shop. Because I need to sort through stuff anyway. I literally have three giant tubware containers full of just random stuff that I threw in there for previous times just cleaning up for either the podcast, people coming over, or whatever. Everything's all said and done. I should have all my drone stuff there, minus the actual working drones. I actually put up a piece of pegboard at home as well to hang up all my drones on the side of the wall. That way, they're out of the way, and I can have them on display. I still have a stand my standing workshop, uh, not workbench, but I got standing table thingy that I used to work on my laptops and then run my Dungeons Dragons games. That'll stay there. The, uh, the treadmill will probably stay there as well after I get it fixed. But I'm making a laundry list of projects to work on and videotape for the shop. I've set up the name Combo Research and Development for the LLC I'm going to create for paying all my videos. And hopefully I can do some Amazon affiliate links and actually get a small following and maybe actually, you know, break even on paying for the shop. Long term goal is to actually build an Etsy shop and produce widgets that people would want to buy. And also help Joe print some, and cut out some album clocks. As I mentioned also previously, I bought a small CNC engraver slash carver, which I still haven't figured out how to use, other than printing the two demo prints that are there. I'm currently looking for software that's not going to cost $150 to convert an image into garbage files. It can't be that hard. I mean, hypothetically, I could probably write it myself if I actually sat down and tried. But that's a different story. Well, about 10 minutes. I think I rambled enough. If I don't publish this, well, it's September 21st? I don't even know what day it is, to be honest. Let me check my watch. And I can't really because. 
Yeah, September 21st, 2018, at 1.05 p.m. This was just my, this might just be my episode for this week, and I would be lazy and just publish this ahead of time. Well, not ahead of time, but I record it ahead of time instead of recording the night of. We'll see how this goes. Later, folks. <laughs>